how to attack Memorial Day Murph as a master's athlete. Memorial Day Murph is a hero workout and hero workouts are created to memorialize someone who gave their life in service to our country. Hero workouts are meant to be challenging. They're meant to be grueling. Memorial Day Murph is a one mile run into 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, and 300 air squats, followed by a one mile run, all while wearing a weight vest. It's a challenging workout. And the first time you do Memorial Day Murph, it just punches you in the face. So the way that I recommend masters approach this workout is to make sure you're fueled correctly for this workout. This is a long workout. It could take somewhere between 45 minutes and an hour or even longer to complete this workout. I'm gonna eat a normal breakfast at 6.30 or seven in the morning. That breakfast is gonna be sweet potatoes or white rice for me. A standard amount of eggs as protein for me or non-fat yogurt or non-fat cottage cheese. I wanna keep that protein light. That's what I eat every morning for breakfast. So I'm not introducing anything new into my system. So standard breakfast, about three hours ideally before this workout starts. By the time the workout starts, we wanna have a fairly empty stomach because we had a lot of movement to do. And then what I do about a half hour before the actual workout start is I'm gonna eat a banana or an apple or something that I usually eat before a solid training session. I want that to be a quick dose of fuel in my bloodstream to help me as I work my way through this workout. I'm not eating or hydrating during an hour long workout. Next, we wanna warm up really well for this workout. We really wanna make sure our entire body is ready for this from our feet and ankles all the way through our shoulders, our core, our midsection, our legs, because we're gonna use all of it in this workout. So I'm gonna start by rolling out, starting at the bottom of my feet. So when we're rolling out, we really wanna be going across the grain of the muscle. So I'm hitting my feet, I'm hitting my calves, Calves, getting my hamstrings and my glutes the best I can, my quads. I can name all the muscle groups, but you get it. And then I'm gonna start getting myself warm. I'm gonna get on a bike, I might go for a light jog. Then I'm gonna do some dynamic running movements in order to get my legs warmed up. Some high knees, some butt kickers, walking on my toes, some side shuffles. I'm also gonna use my banded hip halo warm up, which I've talked about in another video. I'm gonna do crossover symmetry to get my shoulders warm. Then I'm gonna get up on a bar, I'm gonna do some scap retractions, some strict pull ups, I'm gonna do some push ups, I'm gonna do some air squats squats and this is all before I'm jumping into the general warm-up you know the class may warm up for 10 or 15 minutes and then jump into Murph so that this isn't not an all-day affair I want to be decently warm before I jump into a generalized warm-up and ideally that class warm-up will lead right into Murph finally we need to talk about recovery so post Murph we have to realize like this is a huge challenging workout we want to do some cool down when this workout is over so instead of just plopping on the ground and dying after that last mile run you want to get onto a bike and start moving Moving. get that blood flowing let that heart rate come down five ten minutes nice and easy on that and then later in the day as you're celebrating Memorial Day you might want to take another walk later that afternoon but if you can get to a hot tub or a sauna or a hot bath that'll all help promote recovery for this workout that is quite a bit above the volume of workouts that you normally do all right now let's talk about how to approach this workout as a general masters athlete so the stimulus for Memorial Day Murph is that it's a challenging workout that we can do at a consistent pace without stopping too long and ideally get this done in under an hour. The workout as prescribed has a weight vest. And if you throw a weight vest on, run a mile and that takes you 15 minutes and then 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 air squats, even if you partition that into sets of five, 10, 15, if that takes you 40 minutes and then you do another run that might take you another 15 minutes, you've gone way beyond the intended stimulus for this workout. This should be consistent and challenging, but under an hour. To make this workout fit for you, take that weight vest off. And let's say you run a mile in 10 minutes. It takes you 30 minutes to get through the pull-ups, push-ups, and air squats. And then you do another 10 to 15 minute run. There you go. Now you're under an hour. Should you wear a vest or should you not wear a vest? Again, it depends on how long this is going to take. If you could get this done in like 40 minutes without a vest, probably time to throw that vest on and get through this workout. Pacing on this workout. This is a pacing workout. We want to head out on that run, vest or no vest, with a nice pace. This is not our fastest run run as you start approaching the gym or if you're doing it on you're just finishing that up all right you can even slow that down catch your breath a little bit during that last 50 meters or so take a couple of deep breaths come in and as soon as you get in grab some chalk hit your hands and jump on that bar it's time to get busy and get to work now i don't have a problem partitioning this workout i recommend partition it however you want if you want to do 100 pull-ups first then 200 push-ups then 300 air squats that's totally fine i've done that exactly one time but the most common way is to do something like
like 20 rounds of Cindy, 5 pull-ups, 10 push-ups, 15 air squats, 20 times. Get yourself 10 poker chips or 20 poker chips and move a poker chip every time you complete a round. And know that the push-ups are probably going to be the first thing to fail. I recommend breaking those up early so that these shoulders never go to failure. Really quick breaks just to make sure your shoulders don't get too fatigued early on. No laying on the ground with your face flat on the ground. We're just, we're going to avoid that at all costs because that's just disgusting. Once you're done with those push-ups, jump up 15 air squats. If you need to take a stop breath at rep eight or nine, that's totally fine. You should be able to go 15 unbroken, but stopping at nine to take one breath is totally cool. And once we're done with that, it's back out on the run. And now it's time to push yourself. This whole workout, you're pushing yourself. But on this last run, there is so much fatigue. The last thing you want to do is run. Your shoulders are dead. Your legs are dead. If you're wearing a vest, it is drenched in sweat and super uncomfortable. It's now that you remember that you're doing a hero wad. And I love this second run, even though it's just grueling and awful. I try to push the second run and see if I can't get that second run done faster than the first run, just for the sake of selling out at the end of this workout. Finish that workout. Once you cross that finish line, look at your time, give yourself a high five, give others high fives, and find your way to a bike, a rower, or immediately get out and start walking. If you want more tips on how a competitor should approach Memorial Day Merck, well, you're just going to have to jump into my performance coaching group. Take a look at the link in the description. Super simple to jump in. Let me know in the comments how it went for you. If any of these tips were helpful, let me know in the comments. Or if you have tips on how you like to approach Memorial Day Merck, I'd love to hear. Thanks, guys. See you next time.